Ranges are another sequence type. That means they're sequences, but they're not lists. Ranges are there to represent sequences of consecutive integers. Actually, they can represent all kinds of integer sequences, but we're just going to focus on the ones that have consecutive integers, so counting upwards. Imagine an infinite number line full of integers. Here's a small slice. What a range does is it picks out a finite length within this long number line by giving a starting value and an ending value and selecting all of the integers in between in increasing order. Now the way that I've drawn this is important. Both of these point to just before the number indicated in the number line. So that means that negative 2 is actually included in the range from negative 2 to 2. But the number 2 is outside of the range. So it's including this starting value, but excluding the ending value. Now what a quirky thing. Well, it actually makes a lot of things simpler to do it exactly that way. You can compute the length of a range just by subtracting the starting value from the ending value. So 2 minus negative 2 is 4, and there are four elements here, as you can see. Element selection is also easy. You just take the starting value and add the index. Index is start at 0, so the element at index 0 is negative 2. And the element at index 3 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. OK, so it has length and element selection, so it must be a sequence, even though it's not a list. Now, how do you convert to a list if you want to see the elements? Well, you can use what's called the list constructor, which is a built-in function just called list. And when you call it on any other sequence, it gives you back a list full of the elements of that sequence. So a range isn't a list itself, but calling list on it does give you a list of all those elements. That's the list constructor. Now, one special feature of ranges is that if you leave out one of the numbers, so you only specify one number, that's treated as the ending value with an implicit starting value of 0. So listing range 4 is 0, 1, 2, 3, including 0 but excluding 4. OK, so if I create a range from 5 to 8, let's say, it's not a list, it's a range. If I wanted a list, I'd have to call list on that value, at which point I'd see exactly what elements are in there. Now, if I know what a range is, I already knew that it was 5, 6, and 7. But if I ever wanted to check and make sure that it included the starting value but did not include the ending value, I could call list and find out that for sure. Now, a range up to 4 is a range starting at 0 and going up to 4. And if I list out those values, I'll see that it's 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what might we do with the range? Well, there are lots of cases when the sequence you want is exactly a sequence of increasing integers. So if I wanted to sum all the integers below some number n, I could do that by keeping track of the total, grabbing each element i, in the range up to, but not including n, and changing total to be total plus i, and then returning the total. At which point, if I sum below 5, I'll be adding 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 0, and that will give me 10. Now there are cases when you actually don't care about the integers themselves. You just want to do something a fixed number of times. So if, for instance, I wanted to say, go bears three times, a typical way to write that is a for statement like this. Or if I now cheer, it will say, go bears, go bears, go bears. Now, range 3 means that there are three elements in range. 
And we are giving a name to each element, but we don't actually care what that name is because we're not using it anywhere. So one convention is that you use a single underscore character or a blank just to let other programmers know that you're not actually going to use this name anywhere. It's okay if I put x there instead, but I'd never use that x, so it really doesn't matter what I put there at all. This is an indication that you just don't care.